Hello beautiful family. I hope you've had a beautiful, love-filled and blessed new year. I've had an urge to make this video since yesterday and it's raining a lot where I am so we're having an evening chat uh, based upon where I am. And what I want to explore is the concept of Samadhi in relationship to Jesus Christ. Now first of all Samadhi, the word is a Sanskrit word and there's no equivalent in English. And I've avoided using these labels because people don't necessarily understand them. But the problem is Samadhi is a state of consciousness which I have termed the light of silence, the presence of God it has been called. And this experience is beyond the mind's capability of conceptualizing it. The mind can't conceptualize Samadhi, so as soon as you've experienced Samadhi and then you try to speak about it, you move the human being's consciousness that you are out of it by the very nature of our communication system. And likewise, this presence that is labeled Samadhi in Sanskrit is timeless. And so, because our thoughts, our language, our mind is linear. We incorporate time into the way we try to describe it. And so you have this timeless experience of consciousness. And as soon as you integrate thought into talking about it, you almost fail immediately. Because this is an energetic communication. Samadhi is an energetic experience. It has nothing to do with language. Language can only separate you from it. Perhaps language is the framework to understand the experience of Samadhi. Perhaps an animal has Samadhi and can't experience it because it, it doesn't have language so it's just permanently within it. But that is ultimately what this word means. It's a state of consciousness that mind can't conceptualize. It's a timeless state of the presence of God. And it is experienced in a recent video I mentioned that my family and I were walking and my son spoke of a tree and my wonderful wife said the tree is made of wood and I stopped the whole family. And I knew that there was a problem here because once you tell your child that a tree is a tree, they no longer experience the tree if they believe it. Because now when they look at the tree, they see their thought of the word tree. And so I tried to use a word closer, but it was still a concept, a symbol of human language, which still separates you from the experience of the tree. And I said, no, the tree is made of life, not wood. And I hoped in doing this that I could keep my son's awareness closer to this experience of life rather than the experience of the utilitarian value of a tree being wood, a, a product, a resource. And so ultimately samadhi would be when a child sees a tree and it, they are hit with an awe and a wonder of what the tree is. And they might turn and say, what is that? Because they have no words, no symbols to conceptualize it. And of course we must give a label and so we say it's a tree. And now the child no longer has the awe and wonder next time they see the tree, because when they see it, they hear the thought, tree, that's a tree, I know what that is. I know the experience of that, it's a tree. And as we grow in our years, we separate from samadhi, the experience of things as a vital, vibrant experience of life, a participation. And so that is what Samadhi is. It's a, a state of being and, and it's attainable. But it's not attainable by any effort that you can really put in. You can meditate and you'll have glimpses of Samadhi. You'll have glimpses of unification with the objects around you where you can't determine the difference between self and other just as you did as a baby. But that realization can come through meditation but it can't come through any effort of the character meditating 
It can't come through any effort of the character that you are, the person that you are, having spiritual practice and a spiritual journey, etc. Because this is just more chatter of the ego on its journey. I must do this, I must do that. The experience of Samadhi is way beyond that. And so if you're living in a very structured spiritual life, you may even be deceived by your ego into believing you have experienced and touched Samadhi. And that is the presence of God. Samadhi is that. Now I had my first experience of what I perceived to have been an ego death during my long water fast many years ago. I did my 40 day water fast and it just broke down. And I did not know the word Samadhi back then, but I'm very confident that I touched that state of consciousness. I'm not saying I attained it and remained with it, but I am very confident to say that based on the memories this human being talking to you has, that that's when I first fell into that. Because that became the point where I could never forget God anymore. You see, Samadhi is attainable by all, but you can't forget it once it's being realized. Once you have awoken to the dream state, Maya is the dream state, if you're going into the Sanskrit words, but the dream state is the separate personal identity, the separate personal character. Once you awaken from that dream, that game you play of separate personal identity, and you realize the connected oneness with all around you, it's there you begin a deep walk with God. Truly it is. And it can't be forgotten. You might begin, as a Christian would label it, as we're going to speak of Jesus here, sin, to fall short. You might start to partake in unconscious actions. You might start to feel uncomfortable in your being, and so you start grabbing at the world and its pleasures to try and find that comfort that only Samadhi can bring, only truth, realization can bring. And you might do that, but it doesn't mean you lose what a Christian would call the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Samadhi is ultimately that. When you are in Samadhi, you can be baptized by the Holy Spirit within there. Because the flesh might misbehave and do its thing, but when it's over and you come back to finding the center again, the experience of, of the Holy Spirit of Samadhi can't be eradicated and you will be drawn again. You will never be lost in the worldly pursuits forever in that state. You can call it the false worldly. You go into this state of higher consciousness and then you come back and the ego says, Is, are you sure there's nothing in materiality for me? Is there no pleasures here? And you keep my dipping back in over and over into the false worldly. But when it's over, you will go back to Samadhi. You can't unrealize it. You can't, you can't unrealize it. And so, I believe I've done this often. I've fallen into the false worldly where I've tried to see, has the world got anything to offer me? And then I've gone back and I've come back to God's presence and I've said, oh, what have I done? I'm sorry, I've made mistakes. And this is, the, this is the repentance that we go through. The repentance being the word metanoia, which means to transform your consciousness. This is the transformational process of your consciousness. And so this, I think, I hope, encapsulates Samadhi somehow. <laughs> this timeless, indescribable experience of consciousness that the mind can't conceptualize. That's why you can't find it with the mind. That's why there's nothing the mind and the intellect can do to find it. It's a realization that must come by awakening from the dream, by allowing the eternal stillness to participate in the dance of the eternal everything through the human vehicle that you are. Now where does that tie in to what I'm saying with Jesus? Well as I've, you've just witnessed, it's hard to conceptualize Samadhi 
And so these experiences are hard to speak about because if you haven't had or touched on a mystic experience, which the writers of the Bible had, then you, you struggle to convey it. And those who don't touch the mystic, which the experience is beyond the standard human consciousness deemed mystical, you can't end up understanding it and you start taking things purely as historical or purely as literal. And so many layers of mystic writings are lost because of that. And so the writers of the Bible and the story of Jesus Christ put something in there very important. You could say that the man Jesus attained Samadhi on the cross. You could say the man Jesus not attained was in Samadhi on the cross. But the story was structured to show you something. The story was structured to show you that Jesus was crucified on a cross and wounded five times. And so the fifth wound represents, as I've shown this over and over, the, the code of the levels of consciousness, Beta, Alpha, Theta, Delta. You can say with inside the human conceptions of modern language that a person sitting in Theta and Delta is experiencing Samadhi or a knocking on the door of that experience. Because in that state, you're in a wakeful stillness. You're in a wakeful stillness and it's not that you're still, everything is going on at once, but you internally are not reacting to it. That's the stillness. There's a lot of busyness in found in stillness because stillness is everything that's happening, the true stillness of Samadhi. And so there is a documented language and this is a fact, it's a non-contestable fact. English is a documented language, I'm using it to talk to you. We have dictionaries and records of that language. There's a mystic language which is documented and recorded as well and you can do your own study to see that. But this language had, as I've said over and over, earth, water, air, fire, bit, alpha, theta, delta. Meaning that when you are ascending through these levels of consciousness, bit, alpha, theta, delta, which are concepts, symbols to define a way your brain is working. That in ancient times they didn't have those words available, so they said earth, water, air, fire. Jesus, the man, is on the crucifix and he is wounded for the fifth time with a spear in the ribs and out comes water because there begins the journey. The five senses have become subdued. They are no longer. And the five senses represent the dream. They represent the separate personal identity. That's what the five senses represent because the separate personal identity, when you identify as the body and not as the light, not as the, the spirit, when you identify as the body, it will seek to satiate the gap it feels, the lack of contentment that it feels because of that by seeking with inside the world those things that stimulate the five sense sensations of the human vehicle you are. When you identify as the person, as the separate personal identity, you will have addictions and you'll have thoughts that bring you into uh, these, these ideas that lead your body onto these actions. But when the five senses are not subdued, pushed down, but when the realization of the eternal self is there, the presence of God enters your life, then you stop that. You, you, you don't stop it forever, but then the fulfillment contentment is so powerful within you that you no longer need to search in the world to find some peace or pleasure ultimately is what we find. We don't find peace. Pleasure is the, is the antidote for peace. If you, if you seek pleasure, it disturbs the mind, trips you up on dopamine, addicts you to it, and you can't find the stable peace anymore because of it. And so Jesus was crucified and began that journey, but he was also crucified at Golgotha. You see, the ancients were trying to communicate the experience on every level, the physical, the anatomical, and also the energetic experience. Your heart is beating and yet you feel love for those around you, but there's no anatomical way to see that. The, anatom the an anatomy of your body is allowing you to experience love and emotions, but there's no way to look in your body and find those things. <clears throat> the ancients were trying to tell you about Samadhi, that there's a physical element to it, and that physical element is the chrism, 
which comes from the claustrum and travels through the body. Now of course even the body and all it retains within it is a concept. It's still a concept of the mind. And so we shouldn't get too tripped up on this and remember that it's beyond there. These are details of concepts of the mind trying to elaborate upon an experience that happens now without any mind. And so the ancients knew inside your body you had the chrism, the claustrum, which, which activates the brain in a certain vibratory state. And so they tried to show that in the story of the crucifixion by showing you as the claustrum releases the chrism, the chrism sits in the hypothalamus for two and a half days, and so too after the crucifixion Jesus sits in the tomb for two and a half days. But also the crucifixion takes place in the place of Golgotha because the crucifixion of the separate personal identity of the dream, the awakening from the dream state, metaphorically, symbolically speaking, takes place inside the brain, the head of, mind, of man, the Golgotha, the place of the skull. And so Jesus was in that state of consciousness, Samadhi. And when he said, you must be born again, he meant that. He didn't mean that you, he said you can't be, you must be born again, not of the womb. You see, the separate personal identity carries many ideas with it. I'm English, I'm someone's son, I'm someone's brother, I'm labeling myself here. I'm uh, from this academic background, uh, I've got this work experience. And you hold on to these memories which are real, they are part of your journey, the part of the, uh, the, the, the life you have lived. Instead of taking these memories and using them to function here and now, we have used it to build up a very complex dream state, a separate personal identity. And it separates us from the truth of being awakened to life because you see with thought, as I said at the beginning, you see the word thought tree and all the memories and concepts you have around there. But when you walk in that state of God's presence or Samadhi as we're calling it in this video, when you meet a tree, you, you are overwhelmed by that. It is epic. It's immense. And, and, and the wonder of it, the majesty, the mystery of it is, is quite profound. The experience, the participation, the energetic exchange. And so, the ancients tried to communicate it. Now, in Christianity, this has gotten lost because we add on to the identity. We, we take the identity, we don't have any mystical uh, destruction, can we call it? Any mystical falling away of the dream self. It's not part of the teaching. And so people say they're English, they're someone's son, and now they're Christian, and now they're a born again Christian. But still the rigid structure of the dream self is only having new dreams added onto it. When to be born again, that rigid structure must fade to a mist. You must awaken from the rigid structure of the separate personal identity. And you can't bolt things onto there like born again. To be born again, you lose all of that identity. When you are born again, even the label, when you have the experience, it doesn't mean you might not build the label on later in some way, but when you have the experience, you will know, because the, even the label Christian seems totally abhorrent and impossible to label yourself with. Because the experience of Samadhi, the experience of God's presence, is to those of us who have felt this experience of consciousness, without word, without time, and so all words fail, all words diminish it. The vibration you feel there, you feel it oh, sinking you down when you add words to it. It's like I've said before, and you're, and you're trying to bring, you're bringing yourself up and you're in Samadhi, you're bringing yourself up and then you start adding words and you, and you're falling with each word until you get into that colossal noise at the bottom. And so words fail it, and even the label Christian will fail you in that state of having the true presence of God. And so this is important because some Christians, they get what they, they label the concept of this experience to be, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
and they get gifts like the gift of tongues and if in that symbolic that community in their language I have the gift of tongues and what it is it's a state of being where a language comes through you that you don't have any conceptual understanding of and because of that the brain becomes occupied and centered and still on what is in front of it and the stillness is overwhelming when you pray in tongues and what you are doing is you are energetically praying you are praying without the separate personal identity you are finally born again you've no longer got this rigid structure uh, Englishman, someone's son, da, 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 Christian born again, you've now that structure comes away and when you're in tongues you're praying energetically ultimately in Samadhi this is what's going on it's a state of Samadhi it's God's presence and so this is beautiful for a deep reason because when you awaken to it when you see it when you experience it in that state of freedom that Samadhi brings you, you become elevated in your vibration so much, so, so profoundly, so overwhelmingly, that at that point you adopt the new spirit, as a Christian would call it, the Holy Spirit. And that means you will share the same spirit that Jesus Christ shared. Because Jesus did not identify with the separate personal identity at all. And so he was a completely cellularly free being to allow the will of unconditioned love to enter his body and manifest in the world. That's a Christ. And, and, and that spirit that moves a man like Jesus is then your spirit too. His body is different, his soul is different. The soul will give you the calling, the direction of your journey. Your body looks different to everyone else's, but is still the same. You still all have the same brain, same heart. We, we share a human body. We have the same human brain, the same human eyes, the same human heart. We are blessed that we develop these things together as a separate state of consciousness, as a collective state of consciousness experiencing itself through human form. And so as the human speaking to you, I can say that the very same spirit that Jesus had is the same spirit that you can have. Because once you've realized the Holy Spirit, once you've recognized some awoken to Samadhi, you cannot forget it. You can sin, you can fall into your flesh, but eventually you'll come out of it and there it will be again. Because the truth cannot and not be unrealized and so the same spirit that Jesus has is the same spirit that you can have but right now when we live outside of the Samadhi state we adopt a different spirit we adopt a lower vibratory spirit that is not the light of this world because the light of this world is the source of all creation and the lower vibrations are those that are desperate to be that, but can't be that. And so liberation from all oppressive forces, satanic temptations we can call it, comes from liberation of the mind, comes from standing in samadhi, or as Jesus called it, being born again. And this is true freedom. This is true healing for humanity. This is the end for the political games and the wars. Is when we have a society that's built around, its infrastructure is built around being truly born again, realizing Samadhi consciousness. That is a world I can see as possible. And as I always say, if you're sitting there saying, so what do I do now? How do I find this presence of God, this light of silence that you keep speaking of? The best thing I can say is that voice asking the reason that you're not in it because the voice belongs to the character the separate personal identity the rigid structure that you've built and that must fade to a mist the profound and beautiful and simple truth of the realization of who we are and God's presence in this world is beyond mind and beyond language and so look at it yourself 
Don't believe me. Find it. Live it. I'm gonna go. I love you all. God bless, guys. Bye. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.